update on the large greenhouse. Got some things growing. Really just playing around at the moment. Got some peppers, some tomatoes, and uh, strawberries. The hardest part about getting this going, it's been on a very small budget, has been getting enough soil to, um, you know, get something, uh, you know, for the plants to grow in. And, uh, outside we've got some composters going, and um, we've got that one here that's pretty small. And, uh, the tomatoes over here are doing good. Some cherry tomatoes down this end. Yeah, full size tomatoes up here. They're all doing pretty well. Very well. Some more strawberries. Some beets over there. So, all in all, it's uh, actually functioning. But just need a lot more soil, get a lot more plants growing in here. Um, something that was very interesting. So I had this weed grow up. This in here. And I guess it's called velvet leaf. And I think it's a Pretty interesting um, weed for homesteaders and preppers. Now, in some places where they're growing corn, this is apparently a very invasive and uh, costs the you know the corn grower lots and lots of money. So, I'm not saying we should be growing this in um, you know, places where it can become a problem. But um, this just grew up here naturally. I let it grow a little bit to try and work out what it was. Um, and I was finally able to identify it and um, the, the leaves, apart from being pretty handy, they do have a really soft feel to them um, and they're very strong so you've got your emergency toilet paper right there. The stem, uh, very long, probably like a hemp stalk I guess, but very long and um, it's used over in China, still used, uh, China, Asia, I can't remember which one, but anyway, it's still used as a fibre product, um, fibre resource, you know, for making ropes and nets and mats and all sorts of stuff. Um, seed head is quite distinctive, uh, and that is apparently, um, the seeds are apparently edible as well. Oh, the leaves are cooked up in a stir fry. All sorts of uses. So, um, like I said, probably not going to want to plant this in areas where corn is grown. But uh, I think in other places, this could be a great survival plant or you know, prepper weed. Okay, building compost, building soil has been a challenge getting enough of it so we've got a few compost heaps going um, we've just recently taken off one pile of um, soil that there uh, second from the end and got two more started and we need to go get some horse manure to um, start composting up but the greenhouse it's slowly going tomatoes and strawberries growing. It's getting pretty hot in here. Um, yeah. Getting lots of starts going. Uh, we've got the tumbler once again, you know, the compost. Uh, I've had one load taken out of that and we've just started it up again. But all in all, it's getting there. We've had our first harvest of 
tomatoes and uh, a little bit from the outside garden. Not sure if you can see through there. Um, what I just wanted to show you was something that was really interesting to me. Uh, now this just came up as a weed. Um, but I think it's an excellent utilitarian plant. Um, you know, for preppers, homesteaders. Um, apparently in some places this is a, a noxious weed. Uh, now I just let it grow here. I don't think it is in, in our county, but um, I let it grow here just to see what it was so I could identify it. Uh, it's called velvet leaf. And um, obviously that's a very soft and a very strong leaf. So obviously, as far as the preppers and homesteaders, you know, you've got toilet paper there. Um, it's also in Asia, I think they chop this up and put it in a stir fry so it's edible. Uh, the seeds in these pods apparently are also edible. Um, and the whole stem, now obviously that's, that's close to seven foot tall now. Actually, maybe over seven foot tall. A very straight long stem and um, it kind of makes it and it's very strong so uh, makes it ideal for uh, rope making and uh, fiber usage so and that's what they do they still plant and grow this over in Asia for fiber usage uh, I'm not sure if I mentioned the name it was called velvet leaf I think I'll try and um, post the, the true name um, when I do the video, but uh, uh, in the areas where it's a problem, it's I think mostly a problem for um, corn growers. So, but it's not much of a problem here. I'm going to collect all those seeds and pull it out, and I'll even try and make a little bit of cordage with it. Very distinctive. Distinctive flowers, it's all sort of shaded, very distinctive flowers and seed pods. Okay, so the big greenhouse, we had a real cold snap pretty early too. Come through into uh, September, early November, and early October. Um, so all the tomato plants over on this side of the greenhouse were pretty much dead because there's no heating in that bottom section and uh, there's still not power out to the the greenhouse but did manage to um, get a generator running and uh, kept these um, uh, there's like heating pads underneath these and managed to save some of the stuff that was growing up in here some of the more um, you know, fragile, sensitive stuff, sensitive to the cold. The uh, actual strawberries didn't do bad at all. They actually seem to have liked it. So, and the uh, lettuce, which has gone to seed, also wasn't affected. But you can see the the cold burn on you know, some of these that were in the, on the tables. Um, so long story short, I've had to pick a lot of, uh, a lot of these tomatoes. You know, we just, everything that was over this side, we just picked it. And most of it is not ripe. So what I'm going to try and do is actually ripen these. Okay, update on the, the big greenhouse. Had a very cold um, two or three days and it pretty much killed all the tomatoes that were on this side here. Um, uh, temperature was I think low teens um, and there was, there is now, but there was at the time no heating in the ground so I fitted some heating elements into the ground area here and uh, re-topped up the soil so that hopefully next time that won't be an issue. Um, now over the, 
still don't have mains power here, but um, we managed to save a little bit growing over on this side um, by running a small generator for a few hours a night. One of these little little Honda generators um, could it run? Could not run it 24/7, but uh, was able to run it for a few hours a night just to take the worst of the chill off. Uh, I still did get a fair amount of um, uh, freeze damage to peppers and tomatoes. Uh, however, I didn't completely freeze the stalk. Um, you know, the fruit still ripening on there. Didn't didn't damage the fruit too much. And uh, if you look real close at these tomatoes, actually here's a good example over here. You can actually see them just starting to regrow from out of the corner there. So I hope, uh, yeah, hope it'll recover enough to um, keep these tomatoes going for maybe another three or four weeks. So we'll see how that goes. Um, strawberries in the cold actually did really well. Um, no damage to the strawberries uh, um, and they're actually you know, been fruiting quite well. The strawberries generally get eaten very quickly so don't have any on the uh, there's one that's almost ripe but anyway they get eaten very quickly so I don't really have much to show you in those in the strawberries but they're doing pretty good and the idea is now I'm gonna plant something still not sure what to plant but something over on this side that we can grow through the winter months um, you know with the greenhouse maybe with some minor uh, you know, heating of the bed or, or something to um, keep things growing through the winter months. That's the idea.